Hi, everybody. We are so excited to have you joining us today. My name is Joy McDonnell and I am with Cricut. And today we are going to be doing a class on design space and all of the actions that you can do within design space that make you a creative designer using your Cricut machine. Kesley Anderson is our teacher and she's gonna walk you through all kinds of information. She'll start with the PowerPoint, then we'll move right into a project and then we'll move over to actually seeing how the machine is working and cutting and how you apply the project. So you're welcome to use the question and answer area. Myself, Joy and Lindsay are here to answer all of your questions. And um, there is closed caption on this webinar. If you prefer not to see the closed captioning, you can close that down. It's right there down at the bottom of your um, to do's at the, at the bottom of your uh, Zoom class part. So Kesley, without any further ado, we will have you get started and we're thankful that you're here to help teach us all kinds of wonderful things to do with our Cricut machine. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, super excited. This class is being recorded. So if at any point in time you just feel like, you know what, I just need to sit back and take notes and absorb all this information, you'll be able to um, access the recording later, and then you can go back and craft with us. So as Joy mentioned, we'll go through some slides, then we're gonna go into um, Design Space Live, and then actually send the design to my Cricut machine to cut, and you can work right along with me. So why don't we go ahead and jump on in. If you've taken the um, 101 class or the introduction to Cricut, Design space, you'll be a little bit familiar with everything we're going through. Today, we're going to dive into that layers panel and talk more about the actions in design space. So first, let me share my screen and I'll get my presentation started. Here we go. It's a lot of green to start with. Okay. So you're, um, whether you're using the Maker or the Explore or the Cricut Joy. And it doesn't matter if you're using a desktop, a laptop, your phone or a tablet device. It all works together in an in a ecosystem of your device. Like I'm using my, lap, my desktop today. Design Space, which is a software that is on my desktop. You may be on a phone and you're using the Cricut app or your machine. All of that works together and talks together to create projects. If you're on a tablet device, your action items are going to be along the bottom portion of your screen here. So you'll see this icon that says actions. When we talk about the different actions that you can do in design space, you'll wanna click on the actions icon right here. The design panel icons are over here on the left for images and text and shapes, which we'll be working with today. And your layers are in the middle here. You'll also wanna have that open. If you're on a phone, it's the same idea, it's along the bottom. Now, on, I'll be using a desktop and my slides are in a desktop version. In the desktop, your design space panel is on the left side here with text, shapes, and images. And then our layers panel is on the right side. As you add layers or images, shapes, and text onto your canvas, your layers panel then becomes active. So you can see right here, I've added a square and now my layers panel is active and I can click on the square itself and my quick edit buttons pop up or I can click on it in my layers panel. And by click, I mean left click with your mouse. As you add layers to your canvas, and a layer is anything, any individual cut line. So in this example, I've, I had started off with my square, I then added a circle, and I added a triangle, each one being a layer that stacked on top of the other in my layers panel. So as you add layers onto your canvas, they line up here based on the newest or most recent layer you've added. So the triangle was the most recent layer that I added, and it is on the top. I have the square and the circle selected, 
And I can tell it's selected because of this blue bounding box around both shapes. And the layers panel is a darker color in gray, indicating that those two layers are selected, but my triangle is not selected. So on your design panel, I'm sorry, on your layers panel, when you want to hide a layer, you just click on the eye icon and that will hide your layer on a desktop or a laptop. If you're working on a tablet, you want to have the layer selected that you wanna hide. And then down at the bottom, you would click the um, eyeball down there and that would hide that panel. Now hiding a layer only means that you're not able to see it on your canvas and it won't go to your machine to be cut. It's still there so you can access it later um, and bring it up and work with it. It just, you can't see it and it won't go to your machine. When you have layers selected, your action icons come to life. So we have, let's just go over the five different action icons. Slice, weld, attach, flatten, and contour. So what, what is slice? Slice is when you take, you cut one shape from another shape or delete part of an image. So when you wanna use slice, you need to have only two layers selected and they need to be overlapping. So I have the square layer and the circle layer and they're overlapping each other. I can tell they're overlapping by this black line right here. That's my cut line. So when I have these two layers selected, I can click the slice icon and it will slice those pieces apart, just like you took a knife and drew it right along that cut line. So now the circle being my overlapping piece took a slice out of the square and the square took a slice out of the circle. So once you've hit slice, you can pull your pieces apart to make each different layer visible. Slice also works like a cookie cutter. So if you have two images that are on top of each other and you wanna slice, you just select both of those two images by left clicking on the canvas and dragging across the two shapes. And then when you select slice, it actually cuts out the star out of the rectangle. Um, so the star is my top layer. The yellow square here is my bottom layer. And when I hit slice, the top layer cuts out of the bottom layer, leaving you with two pieces, your original shape, which is the green, and then the yellow, which it, which it cut out. So that now weld. So remember slice, you can only work with two layers at a time. Weld, you can work with more than two layers. So weld is when you have layers that are overlapping. So this circle heart, this circle, the big circle in the center is overlapping this little circle here and overlapping this little circle here. So when I weld these three layers together, it joins multiple layers into a single layer and it erases these cut lines. So the cut lines are no longer visible. And where you had three shapes, they will become one shape. So now if I send this to my cutter, it will cut as one single shape. And those cut lines have now disappeared. And I'm using one color of vinyl or cardstock. So it's just one color now. So slice is two layers and it cuts it apart. Weld is two or more layers and it attaches them together. Keep in mind that once you've welded something together, you can't unweld it. You can um, do the undo button and go backwards and reverse your steps. If you get too far though, you can't unweld it. So make sure you really want those pieces to stick together. They're like sticky buns. They just stick right together. Um, so make sure you want them to stick together before you, un before you weld it. So what is attach? So attach, holds layers together on the canvas. When your layers are attached, you can edit 
those layers as one. So you can change the size together, you can change the color together, you can move them around together. Attach also holds those layers together, whether it's a scoring line, a cut line, a draw line, so that they're then treated as a single layer when you send it to your machine. So if I had these three layers here and I did not attach them and I sent it to my machine, so here's my three different layers here. Oh, let me go back. I'm sorry, guys. If I have these three layers and I'm going to position them to look like this. So I want to have, I'm going to cut it out of one piece of vinyl. I will have my cup as one color, one layer kind of, and then the pumpkin and the jute junkie as two different layers. So you can see in my layers panel, these are all three different layers. If I sent this to my machine to my machine to cut, you can see how it separates those image those layers on the cutting mat. So this is how, when you get to your prepare screen, this is what is going to cut on your machine. So what I had before was this was exactly what I wanted to cut. This is how I wanted it to cut. And if I don't attach it and tell my machine, okay, this is hold this position on my canvas. What the smart part of your software is it maximizes your materials. So it moves images to position them so that it maximizes your material. That's not what you wanted. What you wanted was it to go to your machine and look exactly like this. So you have to select all the layers and then go down to your panel here and attach. And if you want to, the difference between attach and weld, if you go back later and say, well, I don't really want those pieces to stay together, I can detach them. And that's right here, the detach. Now, when I send it to my cutter, everything holds its position in the prepare screen. So everything will cut out like all together. So attach, the difference between attach, when do you know to use attach or weld? So attach tool keeps your shapes in the same arrangement as you designed it on your canvas. So when you send it to your cutter, you'll get the preview on your cutting mat and it will hold your separate pieces together, like just freezing them in place, almost taking a picture and saying, this is how I want it to go over. Weld actually unites those pieces, those different layers into a single layer. Now, sometimes when I have a very large piece that I'm cutting, I might weld it together so it does go to my cutter as a single, as a single layer, and it is a little bit less stress on my machine, on my software. Um, I think that's a computer thing. So, um, so there are times when I will use weld but instead of attach, if it's a large piece. So the, the last thing, the second last thing on our action items is the contour. So contour hides or unhides individual lines and shapes. In this example here, each shape has lines around it that are the cut lines. So when you select contour, it hides those cut lines. So as you go into the contour screen, each shape, each individual shape shows up here as a shape. So every, every curve piece inside here is an individual shape. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what what you want to do, let's say, for example, on this one, you wanted to turn this into a solid black bottom. And what you would do is you would hide each contour shape so you don't see that and it won't cut those shapes. So you can, by hiding each shape, you turn the bottom of your, of your design into a solid color. Now, those are still there. So if you wanted to go back and say, add in just the center shapes or the side shapes, you can certainly do that. They don't, you don't delete them. They just temporarily hide them. Now you can also use contour to manipulate a quote or a full design. I love the lettering on this darling, 
but I didn't necessarily wanted to use the You're Beautiful. So what I did was I contoured out the You're Beautiful. I brought my design into contour and I hid all these individual cut lines down at the bottom, leaving just the darling available for me to cut. Those cut lines are still there. I can always go back and add that your beautiful portion if I want to, but if I just wanted to cut out the darling, I would contour out the cut lines that I don't want. Sort of, a, it's sort of, if you think of it like an eraser, um, that you're erasing cut lines, that's the easiest way to remember what it does. Now, flatten is something that you use when you are trying to print from your software. Each layer of a design needs to be flattened into one image, sort of like a JPEG, so that it can go to your printer and print. So each, when you um, look at this over here, the blooming layers, I have all these different layers to coordinate with a design. And then when I select flatten, it takes it from one, two, three, four, five basic cut layers, and it takes it down to a single print then cut layer. And it's turned it into a single layer. Now I did add an offset on this one here using the offset um, tool at the top. I added the offset onto that design so that when I sent it to my cutter, it would cut around further outside the edge of the design. So when you send a flattened image to your machine, first you have to print it. So when you go to print it, it oh, <laughs> when you go to print it, it will put a bounding box around your designs and this box helps your machine when you go to cut, find where your design is and know exactly where to place the blade to start cutting around each individual image. Now, how do you add that offset? When you have a shape on your canvas, you, it's in your edit bar up here is offset feature. What offset does is it basically adds a shadow on the outside of a shape or on the inside of a shape. So think you can think of it like an outline or an inline. I'm sure there's a better word for that. Um, but when you select offset, this image pops up, your, um, the distance that you want your offset to be. It automatically goes to 0.25 and you can adjust it by typing in an exact amount or adjusting the slider. You notice this beta version here. That lets me know it's only available on my desktop or my laptop. This offset feature is not currently available on a mobile device or a tablet device. So you can only use this on a desktop or a laptop. So once you've gotten your distance the way you want it, you see this blue line here, then you select apply and that adds a layer of a shadow that goes all the way around your image. So by adding the offset, I've offset a whole nother layer on the outside of my circle. So you can do it on the outside or the inside. Now, operations are also found in your edit bar. And operations tell you, tells you what your machine is capable of doing. In your header bar at the top, you've selected which machine you'll be using. And each machine has a different list of operations. Some are the same, some are different. So if you're using an Explore, these are your operations that you can use. You can do the cut, just basic cuts. You can draw with a pen, use the foil tool, and use the scoring tool. You can also do a print then cut. If you have the print thing, I'm sorry, if you want to use a foil pen or a regular pen, you can change what indicate to the machine what type um, of blade you're using. So is your, is your tip, it's not a blade, it's a tip. Is your tip a fine tip, a medium tip, or a bold tip? 
And if you're using a maker style, you have a, um, additional choices. So for your cut lines, you not only have the basic cut line, but you can add, use the wavy blade, which will do wavy cuts or perforation cuts. And then you add different tips to do a deboss or an engrave that your Explorer doesn't have. So basically whatever machine you have, we, the operations apply to that machine. So if you want to, let's say you want to engrave something, but you you're using the Explorer, the engrave option won't show up in the operations. Also up in the operations are, is the material colors and how to change your color. So you would just click on this little box next to operations and select the color of your choice. You can even go into advanced color here and do select, type in an RGB color or use the slider scale and select your color that way. Now let's add, talk about text. Text is in your design panel and it's a layer that you add to your canvas. So just like that shape is a layer we add to our canvas, text is a layer that we add to our canvas. When you select text, your text box pops up and your flashing um, cursor is in the text box. As you type in your text, it shows up on your canvas based on the font you have selected in the edit bar. So there's your edit bar. In the edit bar, you can select your font. You can select the style of font. So different fonts have different styles. This Three Birds Life's a Party had it, had it all. Um, it has a regular font and their regular font has a shadow on it. It has a bold font, an italic font, and a bold italic font and a writing font. So as you select your font, you can also select the style of that font. When you're selecting a font, you can search for the, the font you're looking for, either a system font, and those are fonts that you've loaded onto your system. So like on my desktop, I have a number of fonts that I use a lot that I've, I've loaded onto my system folder, and then I can access them through Design Space. You also have Cricut exclusive fonts that you can use, and if you um, want to look for fonts that are Kern, you can't want to have the Kern font box checked. Now, what is a Kern font? It has nothing to do with popcorn. A Kern font is a font that is designed so that when you type the word out, the font, the letters lay close to each other so that they're touching. So when I typed out this word Daisy using the Kern font Cloud 9, I think, um, those letters automatically position themselves so that they're touching. Now, if I were to send this to my machine like this, and let's say I attached it, it would still cut out each individual letter. So you need to use that weld tool in your actions bar and you need to weld those letters together so that instead of cutting out each letter individually, it will cut it out as a word where things are touching. Now, if you're ready to get started, this is the one of the designs we're gonna be making today using all of the actions that we've gone over and the special features of offset and kerning. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this sharing this screen. And just double check, is there anything I need to go back over, Joy? I think you did a fantastic job. Um, you touched, we had a question about color, but then you touched on how to show and choose the colors. We had some questions about the difference between attaching and welding. And I think you clarified those. And right now we don't have any currently open questions. So I would say, go ahead to the next one. You're doing okay. a great job. Let's go. Let's dive in. So if you're, um, if you want to work along with me, uh, go ahead and open up your Cricut design space. If it's been a while, um, since you've last used design space, it, you may need to update your design space. So it may take a minute. Um, don't worry. We'll, you'll be able to catch up. Um, we're, we hopefully will not go too fast for everybody and nobody will get left behind. 
So I'll go ahead and start sharing my Cricut Design Space. Okay, oops, wrong thing. Let me find my Design Space. Oh, here we go. Okay, there we are. Okay. Is it showing up as design space? Is that what you guys see? Okay. Think, yeah, there you go. It's design space. Yep. All right. I just wanted to make sure I had it there. So this is what we're going to, this is the image that we're going to make. And what we're going to do is you work with a circle shape, and we'll use the offset. And I'll show you two ways to do that in case you're working on a desktop, I mean, on a, on a tablet device. We're, we'll use this um, palm tree image and we're gonna write out text. So I have saved my project as life is better. And it's a saved project here, which I can access through my projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and give us a, go to my home screen. So if you're working on your desktop with me, this is my home screen and see this is my life is better project and um, I'm going to go ahead and start with a new project and replace the project I was working on. Okay, so what you want to do is measure your blank. I forgot that step. I'll be working with a notebook. You may be working with a tumbler or something else, but I have a notebook here and I'm going to I'll take my ruler and I will measure the size of the image that I want to, what the, what the overall image size is going to be. So on this notebook, for example, um, I'm gonna make it at most five inches, probably closer to four inches. And I'm working in a circle, so it'll be four inches around. This is one of the Artist Loft journals. Um, I love those journals. I have like a hundred, I feel like I have a hundred of them. Okay, so let's add our first shape. Um, so we're going to the design panel and you'll select circle. And we will add that shape on. It will go to four inches. Okay, so that's as big as I want my shape to be. Now what I need to do is I would like to create a ring and to do that, I'll go to the offset icon at the top here. And you know what, Joy, is the class today an hour or an hour and a half? I will double check that. Okay, I think we're fine either way. I just wanted to make sure. So the, to make my ring, I'm going to go inside my image and do an offset on the inside. So I'll type in, negative 0.12. And you can do any amount that you like to do. If you would like it to be a thicker ring, you can change it to a negative 0.25. Or if you want to do it on the outside, you can do it as you know a 0.25. So once you can see your ring there, I'll go ahead and select apply. Now I have two layers. I have the smaller circle and the outside circle. I will left click outside those two circles, select them both and hit slice. Now I've got two shapes and I'm slicing them, which gives me three shapes because it's, I'm using it like the cookie cutter. So I have the circle on the inside. That was my offset layer. Then it cut out the center of the circle here. Oops. It cut out the center of the circle, and then I'm left with my ring. And so the ring layer is the layer that I want to keep. I'll select both of these layers and delete those layers because I don't want to keep those layers, but I'm going to keep my circle ring. Now, if you're on a tablet device, the way you would create this ring is go ahead and insert a shape. If you're working with a circle, so it's gonna be four inches and you can duplicate that shape in your layers panel up here, click on duplicate. And we will change the size of that to be 3.75 inches, 
my proportions are locked. So, and it's a circle, so there's really no proportions to worry about. You will, with your finger, select both layers because you're on a tablet. Um, you will align those layers on your edit bar. You're going to align the center of those layers. And while those two layers are selected, you will click on the action item slice. And that does the same action as before. So where this comes in handy on the desktop and that you're not able to do on your mobile device is adding an offset to words and things like that. Um, so that's really where it comes in handy. So if you wanna add an outline on words or a more intricate shape, I definitely recommend hopping onto your desktop to do that. But for a simple shape like this today and to get experience using the offset, you can do it both ways and create your own. Okay, yes, so now, yeah. You asked about timing. We are an hour today. Okay, great. So now that I have my circle here, we are going to add an image to the circle. So you would go into your image panel and we are going to go search for a free image. So if you click on free this week, it takes you into all the different images that are free. And we'll look for one that's called, um, I think it's called palm tree. I have the image number too. Oh, there, so palm tree. And these palm trees pop up. I liked this simple one for what I was doing today, but if you like the more jaggedy edge um, palm, that looks more like a palmetto to me. Um, you can grab either one. Okay, so I'm selecting this image. I have my green box around the image. It's in my tray down here telling me it's ready to go. So I'm gonna insert that image onto my canvas. Now I'll show you a little trick. If you're ever wondering what this image number is or more information about this image, you can right click on the layer in the layers panel, drop down to image information, and you'll see that the image number is right here. And you can also access image sets that coordinate with that image. So my palm tree is its own layer and I'm, I'm grabbing it just by right clicking on it and dragging it over. And I'm going to just do like a little placeholder here. So, yes, there, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. we got like four questions in a row. Um, can you do, I think you did the offset. I was answering another question, so I didn't exactly see what you, you were doing. But okay. just before you did the palm trees, did you do an offset? I did do an offset on the circle if you're on a desktop. And I also showed if you were on a laptop, how to just do it with two shapes. Can you do, can you do it one more time? I'm so sorry. Sure. No, no, no. Um, the offset on how to do offset. Yes. Okay. So you grab your circle. Um, my shape is four inches. So I go up to the edit bar and I just the shape size to four inches. Then I go to my, um, and let's just go ahead and give this a nice color here. Let's make this green in our operations. I'll change the color. I go up to my edit panel. So I change the color and then I go to the offset and you slick select offset and it remembers your measurement from last time. So I'm going on the inside of my circle, which that green doesn't really show it very well. Um, I'm going on the inside of my circle and I'm going to change my circle color here. See, I think if I go yellow, it'll show better. Um, so, it, so I'm going to a negative 0.12 distance from the edge for my, for my offset. Now, when I click apply, what happens is that adds a second layer, right? In my layers panel, I have two layers now of circles. So I'll select both of those layers and then slice. Now I have the inside of my circle, which was my offset. I have my outline of my circle and the part that was cut out. So I don't need to keep the offset layer. I'm gonna delete that in my layers panel and I don't need to keep the inside of my design. I'll go ahead and delete that. And now I have my palm tree 
and I'll keep my yellow circle because it's so happy. <laughs> so I have my yellows and my palm trees and we'll go ahead and change those palm tree colors if you want right there. Okay, so all I did was add those into there. And the image for the palm tree is, um, if you guys can type this into the chat, is image number, and I'll show you again how to find that. I right click on it, image information, it's M9FE86AC. And that is a free image. So you can go in and grab that image if you wanna use that or you can grab a different, any image you want. It doesn't have to be that one, that's what I chose. Okay, so now that we've got our shape and we've done the offset and we've sliced, we've brought in our palm tree image and we've changed the color, we need to add some text. So my quote is going to be, life is better on the beach. And I will use two different fonts. So the first font I'm going to use is called Century Gothic. And it's actually a system font. I hope, I think, I'm pretty sure it's a system font. So you just go ahead and grab Century. So by system font, that means when I got my computer, that font was already loaded onto my computer. So I am will do life is, and then I'm going to write in better in a different font. So I typed, I took my, font, I took my text icon, I clicked it in the add text here box, I typed in life is, and then I need to type in on the. Now we're gonna repeat those same steps for our beach and better words, but this time we need to find a kerned font. So I'm, I'm, We'll go to my font selection. I'll look for only Kern fonts. And this time I'm going to look for Cricut fonts. And I happen to know, I, there's a one called Radiotopia. Radiotopia, which is a great cursive font. It's Kern, but there's so many fun ones to use like this, um, Annie Lou is a good one. Um, I like to use that one. So for this, I'll use Radiotopia for my word better. And now I'm gonna enlarge mine. You do not need to do this, but I'm going to enlarge mine and show you by changing the color. Oops, can't change my color. Why can't I change my color? Oh, there we go. Um, I'll change my color because I want you to see that just because it's kerned, those layers, those letters are married up next to each other and touching. So what I need to do is weld those letters together and remove those cut lines. So let's try that again. So we're going to go to text. We'll type in the word beach. We'll do a font search for Radiotopia. When that font pops up, you just click on that font and say, that's the one you wanna use. And then you can enlarge it. You'll see those cut lines are in there. And while it's selected, so even though it's overlapping over my, my circle here, I still only have that Radiotopia layer selected. I'll weld it again. And I'll change the color of that which actually this is going to be for my purposes will be end up being blue. So I'm gonna change all my lettering to blue. So you can go ahead and change your letter colors to blue. And then we just need to resize those letters to fit into our circle or vice versa. So what we're going to do is we don't want our circle. This looks like a hot mess, doesn't it, guys, on your screen? It's a little confusing. <laughs> so what we don't want to do is misalign our palm tree and our circle. So we're going to select both the palm tree and the circle layer. They're selected over here, and we're going to attach those together because now I can enlarge them and move them around. And when I cut it, it will be cut as one color, but I don't want to 
I, I don't want to weld it yet because I still may need to move my palm trees around. So right now I'm just going to attach it. And then I will take each of the different letters and bring those over into my circle and see how they fit. I'm gonna drop down my palm tree and my circle as the bottom layer. And I'll take my life is and bring it up here as high as I can. I'll take my better, I'm gonna put him right here. And then I'll have the on the and beach below that. So still really crazy looking. Um, let's start getting it into the circle. So to get into the circle, we're going to just take each grouping of letters, each section and just size it down. So we're moving it, using the arrow and sizing it down. And we're just tweaking around how you want it to look on your, how it looks good to you. This is the great thing too. There's no right or wrong when it comes to this step. You, everybody will have a different opinion and a different idea of how it should look and what looks good to them. So just keep moving it around a little bit until you're happy with how it looks. If you want, you can bring your letters in between your, your designs like that, um, and you can keep working it around that way. And if you even wanted to, you could unattach, so detach your circle in your palm tree, take your palm tree, flip it, flip it horizontal, and see if that gives you a different look that maybe you like that look better. You don't have to do that, you can. You can just, and then that gives you a little bit more room to slide your letter, to slide your words around a little bit more. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. How's everybody doing? Hopefully you're following along. And there we go. Now, if you want to get really particular about your sizing um, and your spacing, then you can just use the grid line here and move your letter so there may be a quarter of an inch between each one. And, and make sure that, you know, that gives you a happy, happy design there. Like Bob Ross, happy little design. There we go, there. Okay, so happy with my words and how they look on here. And I will take my palm tree, select that layer and select my ring. And we're going to weld those together now. So when they're welded together, my cut lines here will disappear and two will become one. So now it's all one shape. And I don't need to worry about the attach or anything like that. And I'll be cutting that out of a green vinyl and I'll cut Life is Better on the Beach out of a blue shimmer vinyl. So then I want to, now what you wanna do is take all your, your word layers and we want to attach those together because we want to freeze those in their spot on the canvas. So we're gonna go ahead and attach those together so that when I go to my canvas, it won't break it apart. So it'll go over just like that, okay? So if you're with me, you're ready to go to your machine. And if you're not with me, do not worry. Remember this class is being recorded and you can watch it and work along with me next time. And, um, oh, I forgot to resize it. Um, and you'll be able to um, do it step-by-step step and pause it as you go along. So to resize it, I'll take, I'll select both layers and I'll change my width and height back to four inches. There we go. So that's how it's gonna go. That looks much better, <laughs> it's a little big. Okay, so I'll be using a mat and today I'm using two different materials. So I'll be using a regular vinyl, a permanent um, vinyl on this one and a shimmer vinyl on this one. Otherwise you could bring them over and put them on the same mat. So I'll go ahead and say continue. I'll be using my Maker 3 and I'll be using a mat today. And my first material will be the vinyl, permanent vinyl. So I just need to do a search 
and find premium um, vinyl permanent glossy. And I'm going to select that as one of my favorites. Say done. And it tells me to loan my fine point blade. And if you're with me, your um, machine is flashing, ready to go. So why don't we go ahead and switch over to um, my other camera, my overhead camera, and we'll start going live with that. There we go. All right. So just to talk about the different types of vinyl, um, I'm using, I'll be using both a permanent vinyl and a shimmer vinyl. And with the shimmer vinyl, because it does have a texture on it, you want to use the strong grip transfer tape that comes with it so that it will really hold your, um, it will really hold your vinyl and not let it slip off. Um, not, that's not the right word. It's going to hold your vinyl and not let it, um, it, the, the strong, you need the stronger grip tape so that it can grab that texture. All right. So I have a piece of, um, this yummy green vinyl here, and this comes from the, um, sampler pack, the summer, summer sampler pack. So raise that and it's telling me to go it's flashing its light at me so it's telling me to load my mat in there goes my mat it because i got a little crooked there i'm gonna give myself i got a little crooked on my mat there we go much better all right so we're going to load that up and while that's cutting if there's any questions i can answer feel free but i know you guys are on the back end working so hard answering all the questions but if there's anything i can do <laughs> yes we are just we are answering away awesome. um i think i think we've got everybody somebody asked if they could if they could make the ring and the trees different colors and you absolutely can yes so that would just be the thing in the in design space do you want to talk a little bit about the um the mat that you're using and the vinyl if i missed that i was answering questions okay <laughs> yeah you keep answering i love it this is what i really love about these classes is that we do have an opportunity to answer your questions um so it's it's great to have lindsay and joy on the back there answering up those questions for us. So I'm using the standard grip mat um, that comes with your machine. And it's it's just your basic mat. I use it for vinyl and iron on. Um, if I were working with paper, I would use my light grip mat. And um, let's see if I work with paper, I use my light grip fabric. There's a fabric mat. So that's the pink one. And then there's one that does um, there's the mat that does strong grip, which is the purple one. Okay, so now I need to just select that I'm using shimmer vinyl on this layer. I've put my mat, my vinyl on my mat and I'm ready to load it in. Now you probably noticed when I, oh, look at me, I got my hand on it. When you, when I um, took this off, I turned my mat upside down and that's because um, when I, it's easier to get the vinyl to come off if you turn it upside down and also your vinyl won't um, roll or anything like that. And that's more so with paper than with vinyl or iron on. Um, your paper, because of the adhesive on your mat can roll. So you wanna do it that way. Now, one thing about these mats, they are so, they're very indestructible. Um, so I use my mat for everything um, and for, uh, I use my mat a lot. And all I do is I take a baby wipe and I'll wipe my mat clean um, after use. And I put my cover back on it to keep it fresh and clean as well. And that stick is, stays on really well. So, um, so you can reuse your mat a lot of different times. And your transfer tape too. Speaking of reusing, you can reuse your transfer tape. In fact, I'll 
I'm gonna peek underneath and see if I have any. Somebody asked me once where I store my my materials. I'm not using them. Sometimes they're just under my mat, so I have them handy. So I have a piece of regular transfer tape, and I know it's regular transfer tape because it's gray. The the lines are gray, and it doesn't say transfer tape on it. If it were a strong grip transfer tape, it would say strong grip transfer tape on it. And that's what I'm gonna use for my shimmer. Okay, so let me go ahead and while that's cutting there, we're gonna go ahead and use this light pad so that I can um, do my weeding. Now weeding is, if you're new, to Cricut, weeding is when you're removing the parts of your design that you don't want to keep. So the light pad is great because it lets you see what you need to weed out. Um, and I can really see where my, I don't know if you can see it yet. It's, I can really see where my palm trees are to pull out, to pull out the center of my circle. So it makes it much easier just to grab that, my weeding tool and pull out the center of my circle there, just like that. So now I'll start pulling that out as I go. And see how I just work my fingers around and move it around as I go? And that the weeding is so easy. Once you get a little start of it, I just use my little hook and hook it in like a, a good C pattern. And also, if you ever have trouble weeding, you can roll your design. I do this more with iron-on, but you roll your design and it helps pull out those little pieces. So if you can't find your weeding tool and it's late at night and you're trying to get your project weeded, you can, um, you can just roll your design like that and find those edges and pull them out. There you go. And you know what I love about the bright pad is like I, I worried at first that I would um, nick it by poking in with my weeder, but it's got, it doesn't, um, you can't damage it with your weeding tool. Okay, so there's my, there's my circle there with my palm tree on it. And then my next part is my, Life is better at the beach. And I'm gonna go ahead and close up my machine here so you can see a little bit more the designing. I'm not sure if you guys can see on the light pad with the camera the way it is, um, what, I, what I'm weeding out, but it really does help find your little spots there. So when you work with something that has a lot of um, pieces like this, what I like to do is um, keep my scissors handy and I will snip, snip it so it doesn't fall on top of itself. And I can just almost literally pull it right off and walk it off the design. Go smaller here and I'll show you what I mean. So I'll set that aside in here and I'll pull this off. And then if I have little pieces that kind of are in between, I will snip those with my scissors so that they don't, um, it doesn't accidentally pick up another piece. I guess I didn't need to with this one. And then I just now just go back in and weed out my little pieces in the middle here. I just, I, this shimmer is such a fun kind of vinyl. <laughs> it's so cute to use. Um, I've loved using it this summer for a lot of different um, beach projects. And I'm really looking forward to the holidays with that, with the red and the green shimmer to use that. I feel like my house has a lot of glitter in it. <laughs> so the shimmer is nice, it's a little subtle, but it still is fancy. 
All right, so we're just, I'm just weeding out all these little letters here. And I lost an E and I, am sorry, I lost a dot of my I there. So what, if that ever happens, I sort of, I'll go back where I pulled out my weeding and I'll see if I can find it, which I can right here. Maybe angle that a little bit, but it's right there. And then I just reattach that onto my piece. And sometimes you'll be surprised where you find your letters. <laughs> it might be on your face or something like that. Like you have a little, if you lose a little letter, you just never know. Okay, so now since this is two different um, types of Trans, two different types of material, I do want to use two different types of transfer tape. So my first transfer tape will be the standard transfer tape. I lost my other one. Um, will be the standard transfer tape to put down my circle with my palm trees. So to do that, I'm just going to take my transfer tape and Remove it from the backing. So again, this is my regular transfer tape. It's it's gray, um, and that's how I know that it's my regular transfer tape. And I'm lining up the edge of my vinyl backing with the line with the gray line right there. So we're lining that up there, and that goes down like that. Now you can, if you have like a wedge, you can use your wedge and wedge your space like this. And that helps work out any bubbles and keep everything nice and flat. And then I flip it over just like I did my mat. And I pull this off here. I think we should do a polling question if you're a messy crafter or a clean crafter. I think I'm, I'm curious to see how people craft because I feel like I, with my little sticky pieces, my vinyl trimmings all over it messy crafter today. Usually I have my um, my lint brush there so I can put my pieces right onto the lint brush. All right, so now I'm just peeling back my transfer tape. And if you think I'm making this look easy and, and sometimes you struggle with it or something like that, a lot of times it is using the right transfer tape, but it's also, um, it takes just practice. The more you practice it, the easier it becomes. And you can, um, you can wiggle it back and forth and you'll get the hang of it. So if you have a hard time getting your images off the transfer tape, don't stress about it. Just keep practicing with it. So I'm going to put this on my notebook here and I can use the grid lines to line it up and eyeball the top of it here. Perfect. That's a nice thing about using a circle is you don't have to worry about being too exact and perfect with it. So there's my, there's my first layer of transfer tape. And then I'm gonna put down my second layer. Now I do need to be cautious with my second layer because it is the strong grip transfer tape. And what I don't want to have happen is I don't want my transfer tape to pick up what I've already put down that vinyl there. It is a permanent vinyl and it will stay, but it does sometimes, it just takes like, you know, a little time to cure, if you will. So right away, you can peel up your vinyl if you ever need to and reposition it or change it. But I just want to make sure that when I use my transfer tape, um, it's, it stays in place. I don't pick up the other one. That makes sense. Okay. So I just grab a little corner and I peel it out. And then we just need to place that down on here. I've got the straight edge here. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. Just kind of work it back there and do the straight edge along the purple line this time. Right like that. I hope you can see that. Are you able to, okay. Um, so because like I said, I don't want my um, strong grip transfer tape to pull up my green vinyl there. I am gonna go ahead and, and cut it out like this. You could put down your um, shimmer vinyl first if you ever wanted to. And then, you know, and then you can put down your permanent vinyl. I mean, your, put down your 
permanent vinyl first and then do your repositional vinyl. So you can do it that way too. Now, these little pieces might be a little bit trickier to pull off. So I'm gonna use my wedge, work out any air bubbles and then start to pull it off. Now, if it doesn't wanna come off, my trick is to go from the back. So I'll turn this back over and I'll hold the back transfer liner, the vinyl liner in my hand. And I'll use my fingernail or my weeding tool or my X-Acto knife to pull those pieces down. Now there, see how much easier it's coming off when I go and I turned it over and I'm working from the back side. And I'm also kind of rolling, again, rolling that, that paper off so that it comes off a little bit easier. And then I just am going to line this back up. Now, somebody asked if you wanted your palm tree to be a different color, how do you do that? Um, or you can, you know, you can have that be a different type of color vinyl. And then if your words overlapped on the circle, that would be fine. I designed mine not with my words overlapping. So I'm going to put them like this so that they don't overlap. Oh, I lost my L. There it is. <laughs> no worries. Those things happen. I'm not panicking because I know all I need to do is get this down and then I can go back and add my L. The life is better. So we just put that there. I lost my I and I'm losing my L. Crazy. Here we go. So I'll just use my weeding tool so I get it down flat and um, lined up on there. And if you've had too much coffee, this could be a challenge, but you just wiggle it back into place and only you'll know that you lost it. There you go. So that is using all of the different, um, all the different designs, all the di like all of our action items We've made a circle, you've made your own quote and everything. There we go. Leslie, that is so cute. Isn't that great? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I'm glad you, glad you like it. Do you mind doing the, um, giving me the item, the number for the uh, image one more time? Oh, sure. And Which I'm going to type it back into the, chat but you have to remember to use the hashtag when you put it into design space definitely so it's the image number joy is m9 f e 86 a c a or eight a as an apple and then the last one c c c is in okay. caroline yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. And I use, um, I just do like a search when I'm looking for an image. Um, I went into the free this week and I just did a search for what images were free. And the, those, that was one of the ones that popped up. I, I wanted to do something that was relevant to before the end of the summer. Yes. I think everybody loved the class. You had a terrific project. So fun and so colorful. Kesley, as always, we thank you so much for being an excellent teacher and thank you all for attending class. We hope you learned something new. Remember the class is recorded and it's available at, on the Michaels YouTube channel under the Cricut classes. Awesome. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Joy. Thanks everybody.